Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Valvoline and Spares Box. Don't forget BCW5 on checkout. Today we're back in the shop and we're doing something a little bit different today. You probably see we've got the welder out. So today we're actually going to be making a modular tie rack and workbench. So um, if you guys have noticed, we're slowly, slowly running out of space. Even out the back behind the magical walls of prettiness, there's just stuff everywhere. So um, I've kind of come to the conclusion that we're not going to get any more floor space, so we've got to go up. So today we're going to be building the tire rack, as I've already mentioned, uh, and it's going to be basically a double stack tire rack, which you can actually put a workbench on. So it will split in the middle and the workbench will be stored on the top. Uh, but obviously we're going to run through all the details of that. Uh, and the really cool thing is we've actually got professionally drawn plans, which my dad did, and they're going to be hosted on the World Class website. So if you want to actually download it and build this yourself at home, you'll be able to. I've been using this world-class welder now, especially the MIG welder, and within a couple of days, my welds have definitely got a lot better. Um, but we're going to be jumping straight into that. We've got all of our steel pre-cut, so we're going to go and basically run through the steel, have a quick look at the, at the drawings, and kind of explain what we're going to do that way. Then we're going to uh, just start burning the thing together. So the plans obviously come pretty well detailed. Um, this is a full cutting list, which basically means if you do want to buy the steel from a steel supplier, uh, pre-cut, you can actually give them this cutting list, which is exactly what we did. Um, for the price of the steel versus the price of the cutting, um, all, all in all, all of our material costs from the steel supplier was about $260 Australian. Um, it may or may not vary depending on your location or country, uh, but that also included all of the cutting, and there's quite a lot of actual cuts, and all the detail is in the, the lengths of that. Um, the saw I've got isn't always super accurate on the square cut, so um, having a like a professional grade saw to cut all of that on, to me was well worth the forty dollars that they charge us to cut all of it. Um, and to be perfectly honest, there's probably at least an hour in all of that cutting, so I think forty dollars is great value. And to be honest, it's actually way cheaper than I was expecting. Basically, you get your cutting list. Then there's an overview of the rack. The thing I like as well about the drawings is we've got. Uh, each drawing is actually listed what material is required for each drawing. So we've gone through and actually labelled all of our steel uh, with the drawing number and then the item number so that while we're laying it out on the ground we can quickly pick them up and reference the drawings so to make sure it all goes together correctly. <laughs> We've made pretty good progress on the build so far. We've already got our uh, countertop frame mostly done. And we've also got our two upper side sections done. Um, a few little tips on when you're actually putting this thing together. Obviously make sure it's as square as possible using the welding magnets. However, they're not always spot on. I've already noticed one of mine's not quite 90 degrees, which is less than ideal. But unfortunately, a lot of those mass produced things, they're punching them out just in a die. So sometimes there's gonna be a little bit of a discrepancy. Um, a good way to check for true square is actually measure each piece you're welding diagonally. You may have already seen me do it in the video by now, but um, each piece I'm welding, before I do the final weld, uh, we're actually doing diagonal measurements, basically corner to corner, uh, and comparing the measurement. Um, I'm kind of working to about one millimeter, um, but the only thing that you have to keep in mind is that also doesn't take into account um, if one of your side pieces is a, a millimeter shorter. Um, so basically, the, the more accurate your cutting is, the better the diagonal method's actually gonna work. 
Um, another really handy tip when you're welding, when you're welding anything really, is to make sure you remove all the paint. Um, the welder, especially, especially the inverter type welders, they're a lot more sensitive, and they actually have like a current sensing equipment inside them, so it'll it'll basically see it's trying to weld and if it's not onto clean steel, it may not actually jam as much current as you need in to do the weld. So um, yeah, definitely keep in mind when you're welding stuff, make sure you clean all the paint or whatever's on it, rust and mill scale, powder coat, plastic, who knows what's gonna be on it, but make sure that you've got clean bright metal when you are welding. So we're gonna keep chipping away. We're gonna do the final weld on our second side frame. Uh, then we're gonna put the two crossbars uh, to build the top section to be a top unit. Uh, then we're actually gonna weld the two socket fittings onto the top once that's assembled to make sure it's all square. Uh, then we're gonna move on to the bottom section. Uh, then once we're done, hopefully we'll have our countertop actually cut for a drop-in fit. Then we'll tab that and basically assemble it all together. Then finally, we're gonna finish with our wheel mounts and put our caster wheels onto the whole assembly. Uh, we'll do a full dummy fit, then we'll pull it apart and paint it all. Hopefully we'll get it all finished and painted today so you guys can see it fully assembled. We've got to the point now where we've got our top two modules more or less assembled. Uh, we've actually just tacked the, um, the locating posts for the top into the middle section. Uh, the reason I've done that is actually to make sure that they're going to go together correctly. Um, although we've made every effort to make this thing and keep it square, it's always going to move a little bit. So um, a handy tip to actually keep those sockets in the correct spot is to tack them to the piece you want to put them into, then give them a really good tack to the piece you're going to weld it to. Um, then I'm actually going to just cut through those tacks flip it over and give it a full weld out. Uh, we've actually got our bench top cut now as well, so that's gonna fit into this top section. It's actually gonna be um, basically a flush fit with a, a little bit of a recess, so it'll stop tools and things actually rolling off this thing at the track. Uh, the one thing we will need to do, which we don't actually have provisions for in the plans, is to uh, tab the bench top because we thought people may wanna do either a, a top mount or a, or a flush mount, so kinda left that up to people's interpretation, but basically gonna cut through the tacks now, lift it up, off, uh, do full weld out and then work out where our tabs are going to go and then we're going to build our bottom section.
Well, we've got to a point now where we've got all of our welding done. We've finished the whole thing. We've got our wheels on. It's all assembled, bolted together, and now fully painted. Uh, well, when I say fully, the first coat's on it. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to actually finally assemble it today. So we're going to leave the paint to cure, and we're going to come back tomorrow and fully assemble it. And you guys will be able to see the finished product in a minute in real time, but tomorrow in my time. And we're back. Completely finished painting the rack. Got the top installed now. Um, being that this is a solid timber top, I haven't actually screwed it in. Um, after speaking to a friend of mine who's a cabinet maker, he said that if you do want to screw a timber top in that's actually a solid timber piece, make sure if you are going to screw it, you only screw one side because if it gets wet or it, uh, or it dries under heavy heat, it will actually shrink or expand. And if you're screwing both sides of it, it'll either bow the frame or it could pull it in and split the timber. So for that reason, I've literally just sat it in. Um, it, it's a pretty tight fit anyway. He actually cut it for me as well. So um, way more accurate cutting it on a proper table saw than me trying to attack it with a circular saw. Um, in saying that, if you take your time, you can do it. However, being that there's literally a cabinet maker outside our front door uh, and they're kind enough to help us out. So it was nice and easy to just send it to them and they trimmed it up nice and neat. But now that we've got it all assembled, I've got some tires in it, I've given it a push around and a bit of a test. We can actually blow it apart and show you guys kind of the different configurations between tire rack, bench, and obviously the other things that you can do with it. So um, we're gonna rip it apart now. Uh, one, one thing that is worth mentioning too, um, our drawing actually shows the, the mounting plate for the caster wheels that we've chosen to use. Um, there's all sorts of different ones out there. So you may not be able to actually use the dimensions we've drawn. Also, it is worth noting too, if you do need to adjust or tweak your um, effective ride height, I guess for want of a better term, you can actually put washers between the caster wheel and the foot plate. Uh, on, our, on our particular one, I've had to do that on two corners to get it to sit dead level. Um, there's just slight inconsistencies in the spacer tube between the foot plate and the, the bottom tube of the frame. So um, yeah, just spacing it with a couple of washers or in our, in our case, uh, one washer diagonally is actually split the difference rather than stacking two washers on one corner and making it sort of super obvious, like you can't really notice one washer in there. I mean, it is purely an aesthetic thing, but um, yeah, it makes it easier to shimmer it up. Um, also, it is worth noting too that all of our drawings are for ISO or metric tubing. So if you're in North America or Canada or some other parts of the world, you may have to slightly modify um, the drawing to suit the tube available um, to your location. Uh, we don't have imperial size tubing anymore. It's been quite a while since Australia's used any of that. Um, so yeah, all of our drawings and stuff um, for this project and anything we do in the future will all be to suit uh, like metric tubing, like we've probably mentioned a few times, this is 40 mil by two mil wall. And then all of our um, socket joints are 35 mil by two mil wall. So there's a nice little, uh, a pretty tight fit on that as well. Um, we also showed in the video earlier about crushing the tube down. Uh, I think we videoed it, but didn't actually mention it. If you crush it side by side, it actually pulls the tubing in a touch. And it means that you've got a, a, a slightly more looser fit. Uh, and it means that it's nicer to pull apart. Uh, we are gonna lift this top out now and, and use a pry bar to do it. However, it's more just to get our hands under it. Um, you don't really, shouldn't really need to force it up and down. Uh, and then same with the, the, mid, the mid tube, we'll just be able to lift that off. Uh, may need a little bit of a tap with a hammer, but it's not gonna be something that we've got to actually bash apart because that kind of defeats the purpose of being able to split it at the track. However, that's enough chats. Let's pull this thing down and uh, show you how it works. Well, we brought something a little bit different to the table this week, guys. No pun intended. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. We really appreciate the, the continued support. Uh, we really hope that some people actually attempt and tackle this project. Uh, we put a fair bit of effort into drawing it up. Um, Dad helped me draw it. Well, he drew it. Um, I'm not very good on the computer. So he's, he's drawn a lot of stuff for me in the past. And speaking of drawing, these plans are gonna be available on the World Class website. We also use the uh, World Class MS210T to weld this whole project up. 
Uh, by all means, if you want to check out the World Class Welders, check out the rest of their website while you're having a look at our plans. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.